All right, hi San Ildefonso. It's Tana here from the Española Fitness Studio Bridge to Healthy Mexico. It is Friday, um, December 3rd. Hope you guys are having a good day. I want you to get out your balls and bands and a mat or carpet for today, okay? We're gonna start out um, talking about equipment. Um, so the bands that you have and the balls you have are just a little bit different from mine. So we'll be able to make it work though. You're just gonna have to put yours together. So you'll see that my bands have tubing and candles, okay? Actually, these are called tubes, resistance tubing, because they're circular, which is also what you have. Um, so yours are adjustable just by clipping the handles onto the different length of, or the different color tubing, okay? I don't have the adjustable ones, I just have different ones. Now I want you to notice that on mine, the black is hardest, then the red, then green, then yellow. So even if our color scheme is different, you can always tell the difficulty of resistance tubing or anything elastic by the width of the tube or the elastic. Um, if you think about physics, the thicker something is, the harder it is to pull and open. So that makes sense that the thicker the tube, the more resistance, the more strength it's gonna take to stretch it out. So take a look at your tubing. Um, I'm gonna use probably a red or a green most of the time, but I always like to have all um, options available when I'm doing a workout or teaching a class so that different muscle groups, you can use different resistance strengthening. I'll also teach you during this hour how to adjust to be harder or easier within the exercise that you're doing without even switching to another band. So that's kind of cool too. For now, let's just put that there. We just double double check that this is running. Yeah, we're good. All right. Okay, now balls. Oops, I have a little spider friend here. Sorry, friend. Not in the studio. Okay, balls. You guys may have more than one ball, maybe just one. We talked about it at the health fair. I want you to know how to size your ball um, for your body. It has to do with the height of your legs. Okay, it doesn't have to do with being harder or easier. It's just how long you are in your legs. Even if you're really tall, but your legs are kind of shorter than your torso, it'll make a difference in your ball. So you guys will fill up or deflate, inflate or deflate your balls, depending on how tall you are. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you an example of three balls here, and you can help me decide which one is gonna be best for me, even though I know, but I, it's a quiz. Okay, the way you're gonna test the size of your ball is to sit on it. It's a little bit like, um, what's her name? Goldilocks, trying out all the different sizes of things in the Three Little Bears story. So you're gonna sit on the ball, and I'm gonna show you this sideways. This ball is too small for me. If you can see my femur, which is the big bone in the thigh, is not parallel to the floor. You can see how my knee is flexed at an angle that's less than 90 degrees. Okay, you see that? That means I have a whole lot of pressure on my patellar tendon on the front of the knees. It's not good for the knees. This one is too small for me. What I'm looking for is this angle of the femur to be parallel to the floor and the knees to be 90 degrees. Okay, so this guy is too small for me. Let's get rid of that one. Now, let's try this big guy. Oh, I wish I could tell you, I think this is 65 centimeters radius. I'm not sure, I think that one was 45, that orange one, this is 65. This is the biggest one we have in the studio. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna sit right on top of the ball, feet are flat, and let's see, my thigh, bone is now angled up. It's the opposite that it was with the orange ball. And look at the angle in my knees. It's greater than 90 degrees. This ball is too big for me, okay? So like Goldilocks, it's too big, get rid of it. 
This one is gonna be just right. This I believe is 55 centimeters. For my leg height, this is just right. Again, you're, you're, you're probably gonna be kind of different. Okay, so I sit on the ball right in the middle. Thigh angle parallel to the floor. Knees 90 degrees, right? This is the perfect size for me. So that's how I want you to size your balls, okay? Okay, so we've talked about bands, we've talked about balls. Guys, I'm not gonna use any music in this workout today because I don't want YouTube to mute us. This will be your hour long session of this. We'll do another half an hour session on Monday. All right, we're gonna start just by stretching a little bit. So I just want you to hold your ball. Well, we can talk about so many alignment things. I'll try not to bore you too much, but I'm gonna turn sideways again so that you can see. When you are standing to have good alignment, usually we soften our knees. So if we lock our knees, we're putting lots of pressure on that joint. And for those of you who were in marching band or did anything that involved, whoa, that involved marching or walking, you know locking your knees is a bad idea. Let me just adjust the camera a little. Oh, technology. Um, so you don't want to lock your knees, okay? Soft knees. Now, the other thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to arch the back. Okay, this is, we walk around with our back arched, lazy ab muscles kind of all day. So when you're exercising, I want you to tip that pelvis under a little bit. Soft knees, that's a real nice aligned position. Okay, hold that ball out in front of you. And elbows are out kind of like ballroom dancing, elbows out. Let me just adjust this one more time. Oh, you guys are a patient group, thank you. Yes, we're all used to technology now during COVID. All right, that's gonna work. Just a little bit more, just keep standing, get that ball up. Okay, notice I'm standing off my mat for this, it doesn't really matter, you can stand on or off it. Okay, so my knees are soft, my pelvis is tucked under, elbows are out, shoulders down and relaxed. We're just gonna hold the ball out, breathe. Good, now I'm gonna face the front so you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna gently rotate the ball over to the right side, hold, and then exhale, over to the left side, hold. Do that a few more times, warming up through the trunk, through your core, you'll feel it in your back, in your abdominal muscles, in your sides, in your arms. One more. We don't want to hold too long during a warm up more dynamic stretch is better. Okay, now, bend one knee very gently, rotate the ball over, but don't rotate the torso, just the arm comes across to stretch the shoulder, and then the other side, across and across. Warming up those shoulders, warming up the legs, and feel your heart rate increase a bit, the core temperature increase a bit as you warm up. Good. Now, take that ball up. Now, you listen to your shoulders, make sure the ceiling fans aren't going to hit that ball when you're holding it up. Now, soften the knees, concave the chest, take the ball down to the thighs, and lift it up again. Nice and long. And do that again. Last time. Okay, from here, we're gonna continue our warm up. Bend the knees, take the ball to the floor. Keep the knees bent, drop the booty down, and roll the ball out, gentle stretch on the back, and we'll roll it back in. Stand up, and do that again. Soften the knees, roll out, Stretch the back, warm up the legs, 
and come back in. Two more times. We're going to start in that same position, roll out, but this time I want you to roll over to one side and then over to the other side. We'll repeat these stretches at the end of our workout and hold them a little bit longer. During a warm up, you really do want dynamic stretching, which just means keeping in constant slow motion. Okay, I'm warmed up, you warmed up? Let's get started in our workout. We're gonna start with some standing exercises with the ball. So first, we're just gonna work on our balance. So take the legs a little bit wider and then hip distance apart, no turnout. That means the toes are facing the front. Take the ball out. You're gonna shift your weight over one foot, lift the knee and try to tap the ball with the knee on the underside of the ball. Shift and lift. Step and lift. Now, if you don't feel comfortable coming onto one foot, that's fine. Keep your toe down. You can stay right there, no problem. And lift, woo, center. Balance, let's talk about balance while we're doing this. Balance comes from the eyes. Anchor the eyes so the brain knows where the body is in space. Shift the weight, lift up. Balance also comes from core strength, all the way around the back, and from foot health. If you've got pain in your joints, feet, ankles, knees, hips, it'll be harder to balance, but work through it. Last one. Good. Okay, now take the ball up. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bring the ball down as the knee comes up to balance. Here we go. This is going to be harder because the ball passes in front of the eyes, which makes your balance even more challenging. Toes are out, rotating out from the hips. Now you're going to come into a plie. Hold that ball up, shoulders down. Ready? Now we're going to warm up our waist, do some, some waist exercise. You're going to take it over. Now you're going to curve the spine, take the ball forward, take it over to the left, and stand up. So right, center, left, and up. Again, right, center, left, and up two more that direction. Feel your ribs opening up there. So healthy. You know the ribs are connected to the spine. They're part of the spine. So don't forget the ribs for a healthy back. Four times the other way. Always drink water when you feel like you need it. Okay, I'm still going to stay off my mat. Shift that forward a little bit. Now we're sitting on our ball. And we talked about this a little bit at the health fair, but if you feel scared to sit on the ball, okay, there we go again. 
Um, sorry about that break and the transmission, but here we go. Okay. Um, if you feel scared about being on the ball, first I want you to make sure you're in a safe space. So if I were to fall off the ball, I'm not going to hit my head on anything. Um, I have a nice clear space in front of me. Um, then I want you to celebrate the feeling of being unstable. We have to realize that if all we do is things that make us feel comfortable, we never get out of our comfort zone. We're never going to challenge our fitness level or ourselves for that matter. So really important to realize that your body is on a, something round and that can make your brain freak out a little bit. So just kind of sit on the ball at the beginning and kind of rock around. Also notice that if you have a wider stance, you're more stable than if you have a stance more narrow, okay? Um, so for more stability, go ahead and take the feet out. Also, you can always hold on to the ball. That'll make you feel more stable if the hands are holding on. The last thing I want to talk about is that if you were to come off the ball, it's really not that high up. So it's not something that we want you to do, but just to help you get over the fear, um, everything we're going to do with you today is safe, but I do want you to know it's only what? Two feet up, you're going to be okay. 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 So even if this whole workout, you just want to sit here and get used to it, that's totally fine. If you want to ask a family member or a trainer to be behind you, that's also really, really fine. Okay. So let's get to exercising. You're sitting right in the middle of the ball. You have a ball that's sized correctly for you. You're going to grow nice and tall through the spine. Okay. The head is sitting right on top of the spine, right on top of the tailbone. Everything is in good, beautiful alignment. Okay, the feet are flat on the floor. All you're gonna do is tip the pelvis under. Feel the abdominal muscles contract and come in there. Then you go over to one side, little hip rolls on the ball, tailbone back, and then over to the other side. What this is doing is getting the brain accustomed to being on something round, shifting around. You can make it big or little, and then you can do full circles, two in each direction. And then the other way, this should feel really good on the back, as well as getting the brain accustomed to what's going on. Really good for the hips, the back, the core, everything. Okay, hold it there. Now, you're going to bounce. Just bounce. I want you to think about your spine, the vertebrae are together with cartilage in between, and I want you to pull up so that it, you're imagining, you're envisioning that the bones are pulling apart a little bit in the spine. They actually are, but as you bounce, don't crunch the spine down. You're lifting up, just bounce. You'll notice your heart rate start to come up a little bit. I also want you to think here about where you feel the muscle work. Do you feel it in your quadriceps? Do you feel it in your feet, in your calves? Breathe. Just bounce. Again, if you want to feel more secure, hold it here. That's fine. Now we're going to add a little something important here. Don't stand up all the way and sit back down without making sure your ball is still behind you. So you're not going to stand up all the way. You're just going to try to stop the bounce at the top. You got to do that by contracting your quadricep muscles, controlling the core. It's hard to do while I talk. <laughs> okay, and then just free bounce. I call this romper room bounce and then this controlled bounce control and you can use the arms out a little bit in front of you. It'll make it easier. Four, three, two, and one. Romper room bounce, good. Feel your quads, feel your knees in a good way. The muscles around the knees strengthening. 
Rumba room and ready. Controlled bounce for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Last set, romper room bounce. Relax your thighs. I know that you're feeling burning in there a bit, right? Relax everything. Breathe, get ready. Control the bounce. Four, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Ha, good, relax, okay. If your tubing is close to you, grab it now. If you need to stand up and get it, stand up and get it. Okay. Tubing on the ball. You guys have those cool balls that have the ring that has the tubes attached. That's awesome. If you're gonna, if you're using the ring with your ball, um, we didn't talk about rings, but they just add extra stability. You're not rolling around as much. You don't have to control as much with your core. If you're up for the challenge, don't use the ring. If you need a little bit more scaffolding, use the ring. I'm gonna put my tubes under my knee, under my feet, because I don't have the attachment on the ring. You can do it either way. Okay, we're gonna sit up nice and tall. Now notice, my biceps, this muscle here at the front of the arm, are already contracted to keep the elbows at 90 degrees. I'm gonna do a half bicep curl. I'm gonna lift up and lower halfway down. And lift and lower. Little half bicep, half range of motion. Keep going. And down. Four. Three. Two. And one, now hold it down, little pulse, 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 pulse. Breathe, when you pulse muscles, your heart rate will go up. Just keep breathing and notice I'm not strangling the handle of my tube. My fingers are spread out, hold it there. Now, adjust your alignment, back nice and straight, abs in. We're gonna do some rotator cuff muscle exercises while holding a static bicep. I'm gonna open, the arms and then close them. Open and close. I'm just rotating through the shoulder. Open, close, open, close. Keep going. Three, two, one. Hold it out. Now I'm gonna lift up and all the way down. And up and down. Still a bicep curl. Now I'm full range of motion out to the sides. Different angle. When you're working out, guys, on your own, work lots of different angles of the same muscle. You can get lots of good stuff on YouTube or from a trainer or from a book. Remember what those are. Keep going. Four. Three. Two and one. All right, stand up. We're gonna get rid of the ball for a second, just do some band work. So I'm gonna keep the tubing around one foot. It's around my left foot, and I'm gonna come into a lunge. The same arm as the leg that's in the front is going to be resting on it. Now you can rest your forearm if you want to go down farther. I'm just going to rest my arm today. And what I'm going to do is pull up and lower down. Now, remember I told you I'm going to show you how to adjust for intensity without switching to another color band. You can just pull up on the handle, hold onto the tube a little lower, and that makes much more resistance. So you're going to pull back. Now I'm rotating slightly in my core, Starting that lawnmower, chainsaw. Breathe, exhale as you pull. Last 
one. Now hold it up and little pulse. Pull, 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 pull. Breathe. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Center, switch. Here's a little trick to control the tube. When one foot is on and you're switching to the other foot, step on it with the foot you want to be on and then step out. It's kind of like cat's cradle there. Okay, so other side. Don't worry too much about the legs. Just one, one knee is bent, the other is straight. Forearm or hand. And here we go. Let's pull. It's exactly that movement of starting a chainsaw. You're not only using the shoulder and arm, you're using the core. Much safer for your shoulder the next time you have yard work to do. Eight more. guys little pulse pulse be aware of your body notice where you feel the work feel it in the back of my shoulder tricep side even some hip eight seven six five four three two one all right relax put that band away for a second we're gonna go back to the ball now i'm gonna do some some balance stuff on the ball. So now I've put the ball on my mat. Again, if you have a ring, use the ring, that's great. We're going to do some balance exercises. So take the arms out. If you don't feel comfortable with that, hold on to the ball. Arms out, lift one leg. Now notice, I tried not to go back, but I felt myself go back. So I'm gonna try to only lift my knee as high as I can in order to keep the back straight keeping the back straight at the same time. Now extend and bring it in. I'm flexing my foot to get more hamstring and calf work. Four, three, two, and one. Other side, up, hold, balance, shoulder blades down in your back pockets, hold, kick out, eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Okay. Ab work. I'm going to sit sideways so you can see. I also like to use a yoga mat here, and I'm going to start with the ball way at the top end of the mat. I'm gonna sit on the ball, and here's why I like to be on a yoga mat, is that as I walk down, my feet are not gonna slip because I'm on the mat and the ball is on the mat. I want my middle back pressing into the, the ball, my middle and lower back. Shoulder blades are not on the ball. Belly is in, pressing the spine into the ball. Legs are working but try to kind of find your angle in the ball so that the legs don't have to work too much. Now, I'm going to put my hands behind my head and lean back just to look at the corner where the wall meets the ceiling. Okay, that's as far as I want you to go. I don't want you to go all the way back. Just hold, you'll feel that work. Hold, isometrics, strengthening. So that means you hold the muscle in the same position as it's contracted. Breathe. Now you're going to pulse up, press the back into the ball and straighten the spine down. Up and down. Breathe. Breathe. Two, two, and 
root one. Okay, so this I'm gonna call the angled sit on the ball. You can see that my spine is angled, tailbone is pointing down a little bit. You can also call this the watching Netflix position on the ball, right? Because you can sit here and you can watch TV comfortably. Now we're gonna go to a bridge position on the ball. So I'm gonna walk the legs back. Now, now I wanna see the ceiling, okay? This is a little harder. And I like my shoulder blades to be on the ball for this. There we go. Okay. Tush is lifting up. Hip flexors here are stretching. Neck and shoulder blades are on the ball. Just hold this. This is challenging. Hold. Hold. Now, I'm going to drop my tush, drop the tailbone, follow the curve of the ball with the spine, and then come up down and squeeze up. So you're feeling this in the glutes, in the hamstrings, stretching in the hip flexors, ab core are working. Neck is totally relaxed because it's on the ball. Let's come up on our knees first. We'll have to get back to more band. We'll figure out what we're gonna to do to get back to more bands. I love the ball, so I could just work on the ball all the time. Okay, up on your knees. If this doesn't feel great on your knees, I want you to double, triple up your padding. No problem. Now, take this ball and put it real close into the side of your thigh or hip. And then you're going to lean over and you'll notice that depending on the pants that you're wearing this kind of sticks there if you're wearing vinyl it's called vinyl <laughs> whatever it's called slippery stuff it might not stick very well but most of your cotton blend clothes are going to stick kind of lean into the ball and i actually want you to try to follow the curve of the ball with your side take one leg out Maybe your hand touches the floor, maybe it doesn't. It's more challenging if it doesn't. We're just gonna lift the leg lower. Lift, so you're trying to reach out of the hip socket with the leg. Balance, your core's working like crazy. Shoulders back, hold everything but your breath. Squeeze, don't hold anything. I don't know why I said hold. Sometimes I just say things. Keep going, four, Three, two, one, hold it up. Now, bring the leg in and kick it out. Using your core like crazy to not roll around on that ball. This arm can be out if you want a little bit more challenge. Keep going for four and three, two, last one. Good. Now carry that leg around to the back. Little donkey kick. Kick back. Flex the foot. Feel your glutes. My chest came slightly forward here. That's okay. Want to get that range in the back. Feel that glute. Feel that hip. Outer thigh working. Two more. Two. And one. Good. Come up on the knees and stretch in a child's pose to stretch out those hips. And back. All right, come on up, shift that ball to your other side. Always start here with the ball nice and tight into the thigh. Now lean over so it's stuck there. Abs are in, stretch it out, lean over. You can hold onto the ball or not. I'll start holding onto the ball. I'm just gonna lift and lower, lift 
Be aware of the alignment of the spine here. Good. And lift. No turnout on that leg, so you're not gonna be able to lift it very high. That's all right, that's not the point. So really working your full body here. Almost all the time when we use a ball, we're working our full body. I think that's why I like it. It's efficient. Keep going. Four and three and two. Hold it up. Now bring it forward and extend back. Forward and back. Keep going. Four more, lean into the ball. It's your baby here. Good. Two and one. Now carry it to the back and donkey kick in. So by donkey kick in, I'm rolling forward. I better stop talking and hold my core in. Bend at the knee and take the heel into the tush. Work that hamstring and glute. Last four four and three and two and one child's pose stretch it out good job you guys almost there and slowly come up okay now give your knees a break come down on the floor and put your legs up on the ball. This is a really comfortable position. You might wanna stay like this for a little while. The first thing you're gonna do, let's do just a little stretch here. Take the hands out, pull the ball in real close to the back of the thighs. And again, when you're working on a ball, it's a good idea to wear shorts so that your skin is sticky on the ball or cotton blend pants. That'll help you stick to the ball. Now you're just going to roll, keep the shoulder blades on the floor, allow the legs to carry the ball over so you feel a little work here in your obliques, and then lift up. And then roll to the other side. Make sure you listen to your back here. I do want you to be contracting through the abdominal muscles to support that back. Okay, we're gonna go again, our third try here. We're on the floor with our tuning. And we're gonna put it around our feet. Hold on to the handle, sit up nice and tall, okay? You're gonna wrap up on the tubing if you have too much here. Now, if you have arthritis, it might hurt to wrap like that. So instead of wrapping, just loop. Pull the feet back and you're going to stretch down and then pull back. Lean back. Stretch forward and lean. my pelvis. This is much easier to do with the tubing. It acts as reins you can hold on to. Really nice. This time let's hold it back. I'm going to release a little bit on the tube. Again, if I wanted more, I could stay up on it. Just hold it there. Now I'm going to pull with one arm at a time. So pull. I'm not going to rotate the core to start with here. I'm just working my deltoids, muscles around the shoulder. Pull back. Looking up towards the ceiling at a nice diagonal angle. Now, how about both arms? Pull for eight. Keep going. Eight, good, stretch down. Okay, now get down on the floor, keep the tube around the feet. And I'm going to drop the elbows so I can still hold on to the tubes here with my thumbs up on top. I'm going to bend the knees and then one foot at a time is going to go out, taking the band with it. Come in and switch. This is really good for foot awareness. 
I'm not bringing my legs down too far because I don't want to arch the back. So maybe you're keeping your feet up high or maybe you're bringing it down. If you want extra challenge, tuck the chin and do a cervical nod as you do the tuned bicycle. Keep going for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Okay, bend those knees and take a little break. Keep the tubes around your feet. Straighten the legs up. Now this might be hard for you if you have tight hamstrings. So go ahead and hold on to the reins and take the feet down just, just a little bit and try to straighten those knees. Elbows are down like they were before and we're gonna do double leg hip circles. So just trace a circle on the ceiling with the top of the feet, excuse me, with the bottom of the feet, using the tube as a reins. Keep going. change direction. Here we go. Around. Working your core, lengthening out through the legs and definitely stretching the back of the legs. Last two, two, and one. Okay, sit up. Now, take your handled tube and put one handle through the triangle of the other handle to make a slip knot. Slip your front foot through that slip knot. Make sure you're wearing shoes here, okay? Um, nice supportive shoes. So that tubing is right in the middle of your foot. Now, you're gonna sit back and we're gonna do single leg hip circles. So again, I'm holding on to the reins I'm gonna start with my supporting leg bent. If I want extra challenge, later on in the exercise, I'm gonna straighten that supporting leg. Now I'm gonna flex this foot and I'm gonna lead it all the way around, resisting and pulling at the bottom. Lift and circle. Again, here's your option, knee is bent. Do not arch the back here. Keep that belly pressing into the spine, which is pressing into the mat, which is pressing into the floor. I like to put the other hand on that hip bone of the supporting leg to keep it down. Make sure the body's not rocking all around. Keep two buttons on the floor. And change direction for eight, seven. Now you could keep this real small if you want, of course. Six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Good. While we're here, before we switch legs, let's go ahead and stretch this leg. So I want you to hold on to the reins with the opposite hand. We're going to stretch the IT band here. So you're going to leave that leg to turn in, all the way from the hip to the ankle, turn in towards the midline of the body. Arm is out and just cross over the center line. If you do it right, you can only go a few inches. Try to really keep that knee straight, foot flexed, leg turned in. Turn the head to look the opposite direction. Hold. And release. Now, release the tension on the band. Anytime that you're moving joints, you don't want tension on that band. So I'm just gonna drop it over to the side. And then I'm going to come up and flip myself over. You'll probably get a little tangled up in the tubing your first Okay. Leaning out the hip joint. Circling around. Exhale. 
and then the other direction all the way around. Last two, last one, your hips should feel really good there. Now pull back to stretch the hamstring, remember knees straight. IT band, hold on to the reins with the opposite hand. Turn the whole leg in from the hip to the ankle. Feel the stretch on the outside of the leg. Try to straighten those knees and gently pull across the body just a little bit. Breathe, I know it hurts. It's good, it hurts so good. Hold. Release any tension. Take that band across the body. Flip over. Take it up above the shoulder and gently pull to stretch the quadricep. And get ready. Let's do some hamstring curls. Open and close. I'm resisting against the band. So the band wants to pop back up as my foot comes back up towards the hip. Resist. It's easy to resist on the way down, harder to resist on the way up. Four more. Four. And three, two, and one. Release tension on the band as you sit up and take that slip knot off your foot and get rid of the band. I'm just going to do a little inner thigh, then we'll stretch you out and finish up this fourth video that we're going to piece together to make your full workout. Thanks for your patience with technology, guys. Okay inner thigh. You're going to sit up nice and tall on the sit bones and you're going to put the ball between the knees or if that's uncomfortable you can put it any place on the inside of the leg. So maybe it's on the inside of the calves, maybe it's on the inside of the knees. This might be a place that you want to use a smaller ball. Um, now I want you to flex the feet back, sit up and forward and I want you to kind of hug that ball, okay? Now you're gonna squeeze in with the legs. You're gonna feel the inner thigh immediately because everything else is isolated. You cannot cheat doing this. And believe me, the inner thighs like to have a lot of help from cheating other big muscles. Keep going. Four, three, two, and one. Now hold it in and pulse, pulse, pulse. Pulse, pulse, squeeze. Inner thighs probably burning for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good. Okay. Guys, let's stretch now. So let's start here in a good straddle stretch. We're just going to use our ball for a little extra support here. Roll the ball out. Notice my feet are flexed back. And I'm just gonna use the ball to stretch forward. Really great stretch in the back. Maybe you can't see too well, but my hands are straight. I'm gonna listen to my biceps, put my ears in between my upper arms and stretch. And then walk the ball over to one side, stretch up through the back and the ribs. Remember we used that at the beginning of this class. And center and then the other way. And center. Come on up. Sit on your ball. Yeah. 
take one foot out, sit nice and balanced, and you're gonna stretch down towards the knee. Again, you can hold on, hold on to the floor, hold on to the ball, hold on to your legs. We're just flexing that foot back, stretching the hamstring, back of the calf, foot. And center, now that same leg is gonna go out to the side, sit side saddle, lean back, to stretch out the quadricep and hip flexor balance. And let's do shoulders at the same time. Just open, of course, listening to your range of motion. Let's hold it across and look to the front, still stretching that hip flexor, hold, center. Out to the front, second leg. Stretch down, hold it down. Come up, gently here, get comfortable on the ball, side saddle, lean back, open up through that hip flexor and quad, arms circle around. And around. This time hold it in the front. Stretch gently, just gently pushing on the tricep, not the elbow, to get a little extra stretch around the shoulder. Hold. And release. Okay, guys. Huh. That's your ball and bands workout for today. I'll piece together those different videos, and hopefully um, it'll be pretty seamless for you. See you on Monday for a half an hour um, of balls and bands. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.